When you want, need, or crave a person that has rejected you in any way, it is not love. It's an unhealthy fantasy that they can love us in the way our parent did not. I will show you in this video today why you can't get over your ex from the perspective of the primal conditioning you received in your childhood that is now causing your toxic relationship cycles to keep recurring. You're experiencing the same chemicals as an addict and your belief system is deep in your subconscious. Breakups are the perfect storm of conditions for us to really self-abandon. But because they bring up these core patterns and beliefs, it's also the perfect time to do significant healing. So I want you to stick around to the very end of this video because I will show you how to start properly healing this core wound from its foundation so you can rebuild your internal sense of self to know and trust what healthy, available love actually feels like because we learned this process of self-abandonment in our childhood, by definition, this means we can now relearn this process of self-reclamation and healthy self-love in adulthood. And today I'm going to show you exactly how. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Amy and I help women in toxic dating and relationship cycles heal their past and connect to their self-worth so they can create the healthy, secure and loving relationship they desire. And if you want more content on this topic, please be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button so that you get notified when I post new videos twice a week. Now, before we begin, I want to announce that a few spots have opened up for the free one-to-one -one consult with me for the Love by Design program. Make sure you stick around to the very end of the video for the announcement on how to do that. So this video is for anyone who's ever been rejected by a partner in some way, from just simply them breaking up with you to them cheating on you and you still want them back. You cannot let them go. You keep idealizing them, remembering them, only the good times. And there is a deep part of you that is so willing to ignore all the ways they hurt you in order to be with them again. And this really makes you feel out of control and lost. There is a very normal reason for this that I will share with you in a minute. Now, this might have happened last week, last month or year, or perhaps years have gone past and you haven't been able to let them go. The longer the time it's been that you've not gotten over them, the more you need to pay attention to the contents of this video because the more deeply it will apply to you. Let's firstly normalize the process that has happened when we get rejected. I want to set a few things straight here because there are all sorts of terms being thrown around for situations like this. Codependence, addiction, and I really want you to understand the normal aspects of breaking up and how they can then play into this unhealthy core belief system. There is a very normal and natural chemical reaction going on in our body when we get rejected. When we've been in love with someone and they reject us, we go into withdrawal. Our brain intensifies the production of the same chemicals it would as if we were withdrawing from drugs or alcohol. So in withdrawal, the physical reaction of our body is actually trying to get us back to them. And in our mind, we make sense of it by thinking that because we crave them so much that they were the one and we create these fantasies around getting back with them all in response to this wound-based chemistry that's naturally part of rejection. Now, like I said, this creates a perfect storm if we have an old core belief system at play that's trying to heal unmet needs from our childhood. This belief system gets a chance to be reinforced with our body's natural reaction to withdrawal. And this can be a really tough pill to swallow. So stick with me. When you want, need or crave a person that has rejected you in some way, that wanting and needing is not love. Yes, you love them and the appropriate emotions that come with grief like sadness and anger should be honored and be allowed to be processed in our body during the grieving period. But if you are still holding on and experiencing significant neediness or craving, there is a belief system that's being activated inside of you that your ex represents a parent figure from your childhood who also rejected you in some way. So let me say that again. Your ex 
and that person could have been past exes and you've had the same response to rejection again and again, represents a parent who also rejected you back when you were a child. This rejection is a familiar wound in your psyche that gets opened up again and again and again, like a scab that you just can't stop picking at. And the chemistry that I mentioned before keeps you addicted to the same pattern of rejection in your life. So instead of fully feeling your feelings of grief and sadness and anger and practicing active letting go of your ex and healing and giving yourself healthy time and space to do that and properly heal, your old childhood belief system steps in and creates a mess of the situation. So when this system is activated, there is a familiarity to the rejection. It's comforting on some level that when you were rejected in any way by a parent and the same spectrum applies, it could have been everything from them just being super busy with work or life in general when you were a kid to them being bipolar or physically abandoning you or abusing you, same kind of rejection. What happens is this familiar, comfortable state of being rejected as a child gave us a very clever mechanism that stepped in to protect us. We split internally from who we are, this being that isn't being loved, to a different version of ourselves that we can create to get that love. And this happens out of our awareness as a child. We abandon our real selves, our reality and our feelings, our knowingness, in order to get accepted by the pack, by our parents. Now, connection is one of our primal survival needs when we're an infant, when we're very young. And this split represents an incredibly amazing self-protective mechanism that helps us to get our connection needs in childhood. But it is so destructive as adults. If we don't heal it and we carry it through into adulthood and keep trying to maintain this internal split, we have to actually abandon our reality to get love. We have to ignore our feelings, our emotions in order to be accepted, or at least we think we do because it's this core belief from childhood that hasn't been healed. The energy that keeps this split active within us is shame. We have to shame ourselves to make ourselves wrong and them right in order to maintain the reality that we know is familiar. We have to shame ourselves, make ourselves wrong and the other person right in order to maintain this reality that we know is familiar and safe so that we can be loved. But as I've said, this is not love. It's why we sometimes feel like we are going crazy because we actually are, we're trying to maintain this internal valley within us and exist in two separate realities at the same time. On one hand, we're experiencing these feelings and emotions, and on the other hand, we're denying them and making them wrong because we've got to connect to this other person to get acceptance and love. So this is the core of the belief system from childhood that causes us so much of our distress and unhealthy, insecure attachment when we get rejected by someone. Now, when we play this out as an adult, we project our unmet need to finally be loved by our true selves and to not have to maintain this internal duality onto our partner or our ex. It seems like a reasonable ask, right? Now, healthy attachment in adults creates safety and nurturing so that we finally do feel accepted and loved for who we are. And we do this process within ourselves as well as in our relationship. So why are not all relationships happy and healthy? Because there is a sabotaging element to this old belief system. Not only does it get strengthened and reinforced when we try to chase someone who's rejected us, we're actually sabotaging ourselves in the way we choose our partner. How many of your relationships have you fallen head over heels in love with someone really quickly and you've experienced the thrill and excitement of romance and then the relationship has utterly crashed and burned a few months or a year later? And this is a pattern of yours. This is because the lust and excitement you think you're feeling is actually the anxiety of your old belief system getting activated. That finally, this person is going to love you in the way that your parents didn't. 
and on some level you've actually been attracted to them because they are unavailable to you or reject you in some familiar way like you were when you were a child. Now a lot of you are going to think I'm crazy in suggesting that your picker is broken. No, these feelings I had for him were real. It was love. But look, if you're experiencing any kinds of feelings of a rush or lust or a thrill, they are chemicals. And when you meet someone, chemistry can be really confusing with love because healthy love grows over time. It solidifies as you show up consistently over months and months of growing trust and reliability and safety. It's not going to be there on the first date. That's your little child projecting fantasies onto the situation, thinking it's going to get its unmet needs finally healed. Now, if you're still unsure about this point, I want you to imagine a person who shows up completely available to love every bit of you. They adore you. They love you unconditionally. This old belief system is going to think that there is something wrong or yucky or boring with that person because you believe that about yourself. The shame of who you are, remember, is the energy that keeps this internal split in play. So anyone that loves you unconditionally has to be wrong and broken or not right to be with you. Can you see how we block ourselves from receiving healthy love? This is a really in-depth video. I want you to let me know in the comments below how you're receiving this. How have you experienced this in your life? What are you disagreeing on? Let me know because this is all very helpful to me and how I teach you. So if you're hearing information for the very first time and your mind is being blown, I just want you to know that this is a healing journey and it doesn't happen overnight. And to be honest, individual therapy, depending on where you're at and what you've experienced, is really highly recommended, if not essential, so that you can fully unpack and heal all of your outdated belief system. But you can start healing today, and I'm going to go over the main structure of the healing process because, as I'm sure you can tell, I've been where you are at right now, and it blows me away how insidious this core belief system is and I use this structure every day in my life to heal a bit more and enjoy healthy love from people around me. It's also worth pointing out that this healing will ultimately never end because shame is always going to be a part of our identity and we won't ever be immune to it. But after years of practicing this, I'm now quicker to pick up on shame stories and to break out of any unhealthy patterns and be more of an advocate for my true self in all of my relationships and communication. So the first step to healing is to become aware of how you self-abandon. Do you get lost in a relationship? Do you have an addiction to food or drugs or love or sex or alcohol? And specifically in relationships, what do you believe about yourself when they break up with you? Get really clear on the old records and stories that you play in your mind over and over again. Breaking up with someone or more than one person if you've never fully allowed yourself to heal after a breakup is an initiation. It's a real baptism by fire and it helps to guide us to what is right for us by knowing what isn't right for us in the case of your ex who represented a few things that you did really like as well as a few things that weren't right for you because you didn't receive the love you needed at that time. The next step is to connect to reality. Plug yourself back into your own feelings and emotions and sensations and general reality. The effect of being in this split state is that when we try and maintain two different identities, we create a different reality around it and we dist distrust our bodily sensations. We just generally avoid what's actually going on. We are masters of living in fantasy. So we have to bring ourselves back to the reality of the situation. And this process involves coming face to face with some pretty strong emotions, which is why I really recommend therapy if this is your first time navigating this. It's so helpful and important to have another person hold a space and witness our emotions through one-to-one -one therapy. We also need to properly grieve the loss of our ex fully with all of the sadness and anger and longing and bittersweet joy and depression that it comes with. And we need to lovingly respond to ourselves as if we were guiding a friend through the grieving process. 
let yourself grieve and give yourself that time and space to do this. Give up a time frame of trying to force it and just let the grieving process unfold naturally. You also need to learn how to self-protect. You are getting in touch with some really vulnerable places within yourself and you need to self-protect during this time of grieving and healing. You need to resist the urge to reach out to your ex, which will only rewound you. And each time you resist that urge, your internal adult, this part of you that is actually reparenting the younger split part of you that's grieving, gets stronger and gets more permission to have a louder voice in the decisions that you make and the things that you do. Depending on your level of disconnection to yourself, you may benefit from attending CODA or SLAA and going through a 12 step process. Or you may just be able to remind yourself of the reasons why you broke up and picture yourself back in that relationship and then they continue to do those same things that, you know, would that actually be okay with you now? You know, now we're aware that this is a co-created situation, right? This situation is not entirely on us by any means. So you need to hold true to how you were hurt and betrayed and rejected by that person. That's part of the reality. It's a really important aspect of allowing the split to heal. Lastly, we want to learn how to rewire. When we're ready, we want to start getting a taste of what healthy love feels like. And it is not a good idea to jump into a new relationship too early, but look for places where people really do love you and let yourself receive their care and love, whether that's family or friends or your pet. Spend time really reveling in that love, in that way that they show up for you without conditions and practice being vulnerable with them and don't hide this new part of yourself. Let them love those parts of you that are hurting. It only serves to deepen our friendships and our family connections in this way when we're vulnerable. It is a real gift to people that deeply care about us. And we want to take every opportunity to create a new reality for ourselves where we experience the depth of emotion and vulnerability that we've previously been hiding from. So consider taking up a new hobby or taking up that offer to go camping or have a weekend away with those new friends or even just drive a different route to work. Like do whatever you can to create newness, new connections in your brain, in your life on the outside so you can honor and nurture the new growth that's happening on the inside. Now, this has been a massive video today, and if you got this far, congratulations, but it's really only still skimming the surface of what I teach in my group program, Love by Design. And if you're interested in diving more into healing this split in your internal world so that you can create a truly authentic, healthy relationship in your life, I want you to join me in my free training to learn the exact three-step process on how to go from anxious and insecure to secure in relationships. And you can click the link above my head or click the link down below and go find that video. You can also interact with me on a more personal level in my free Facebook group, Love by Design. And if you want to submit your application for the free one-to-one -one consult for Love by Design, you can do all of that in the link in the comments below. And please, if you have any questions about this very in-depth topic or any points that you need me to clarify on or any questions you have, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you and I will be in the comments. And if you found this video helpful and valuable, please click the like button to help this channel out and also subscribe for more content like this one because I post twice a week. In the meantime, here are some great next step videos for you to watch so that you can continue to move one step closer to an incredible relationship with yourself and with the partner you desire. But for now, I will see you in the next video.